Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Skymaster F-18 build assembly series. Um, what are we doing? Well, last episode we got the canopy done, kind of started working on that front tray. We're just going to continue with the uh, putting the stuff in the fuselage, basically. I'm going to get the last couple bits and pieces done in the, uh, the, the aft section of the front fuselage portion and then we are going to join the fuselage pieces together once we kind of have all the access pieces, um, uh, all the things we need access for figured out. So anyways guys, without further ado, we're going to hop into this video, but before we do, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below and if you have any questions or comments, list them down below. Let's hop in. All right, guys, so the tray is done. It's all painted, um, added two little strips or slits there for the Velcro to go through. And this Velcro is to hold the smoke tank. Uh, smoke tank, I've put a little tiny piece of the uh, fuzzy side of the Velcro on there so it sticks to the strap um, just to keep the, uh, the top uh, Velcro from being able to slide. And then when I put the tank in, I'm going to put... Uh, a couple pieces of double-sided tape on there. The, um, the Velcro should be plenty, but I just want to make sure that that tank doesn't move. And uh, so that's that. So basically, the, um, <clears throat> like I, the I've, I've also leak-tested the tank as well, too, the same way I did the other ones. So anyways, guys, the, uh, the tray is ready to go in to the aircraft, just like that. So we'll, uh, we'll screw it back in place. And um, just a little side note here. Uh, also last night, uh, once the uh, initial cure happened on the uh, the adhesive I used to put these bands in, I went in and filled these joints with high sol. Uh, there was a couple of gaps, or there was a, a, a gap all along the edge there, and uh, got quite a bit of high sol force down in there. So now the, that is extremely strong and reinforced. So. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this plate in. I think I'm going to join the fuselage pieces. And then what I need to do is spend a bit of time organizing all the tubes. So I've got the uh, organizers here glued in for the airline. So we'll do all the airline pairing on one side. Now if you remember this, we've got to put the valves in the nose... And uh, so we've got to basically pair all these things up, like gear doors and everything, and then run the single feed to the nose um, of each of these these pairs and units and stuff. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then we've got the wire organizers on that side. So um, once the fuselage is joined together, we need to spend a bit of time figuring that stuff out. But uh, that's the next step. All right, guys, there's a look at the uh, front fuselage portion. And um, <clears throat> so our bolts come through this side and bolt into the rear portion of the airframe. And there's a look at the, uh, the rear portion before we bolt it on. So uh, there's six bolts in total. Those are our fuselage joining bolts. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, we are gonna Loctite these. So I'm gonna bolt this frame together, hopefully for the last time. And I will share my failures with you guys as well. So I have to unbolt the plate because that has to go in afterwards because our bolts are right down in that area. All right, guys, fuselage again is bolted together. Uh, this time with Loctite, all the bolts are in and tight. And uh, there we go. Front end is assembled. So one of the issues that um, I think we're going to have here, not really an issue, just something that's... Uh, uh, we have to think about is when we put this the canopy on this back piece is keyhole okay so that slides in but we've got two bolts at the back here which we've got to put together so we still have good access with our hand in this area uh, it's not great access because the main tank comes to here but we can still get there so the the one downside is once that smoke tanks in uh, we're not going to have a ton of room so <clears throat> we may have to um, put that smoke tank in as, as a very last step, uh, but we'll have to figure that puzzle out as we go, I guess. Anyways, that's, uh, that's where we're at. So I'm going to start uh, just kind of messing around with the, the wiring and everything and see what I can come up with as far as organizing stuff. 
So as per usual, guys, this is the time in the build when you do something big and you realize that you forgot to do some stuff. So anyways, there's the vent for the main tanks and the vent for the smoke tank was supposed to go right there. I've got it in my hand and uh, I'll be installing that. So fortunately, we still have decent access with our hand over here. So getting it in won't be impossible. Of course, it'll be a lot easier um, if the fuselage wasn't joined, but the hole is on the underside right about here is where we have to put it in. So anyways, uh, fairly simple to install, but that's what's happening. All right, guys, couple things uh, more here that I figured out. So number one, we need the uh, UAT fill line, which is here. Uh, I thought about doing it in the front somewhere, maybe hidden inside the wheel well or something like that, but I don't like that idea. I'd rather just have it back here and have all of our starting uh, stuff available right here. So uh, just waiting for my uh, glue to dry on these two little clips. Uh, again, thank you, Joe, for the little clips. The fuel clips are awesome, and we'll just have the, the fill line right there. Um, so that'll work well. Uh, the vent has been mounted in the airframe. Can see it right there and I've spent a couple hours working on the airline routing there so it's uh, not an easy position to work in because you cannot fit two hands in there so everything's done with one hand and multiple fingers um, so thankfully it's uh, it's worked okay and uh, basically all the almost all the lines are done. We still have the uh, gear open lines and also the main gear locks to deal with. But uh, that's what uh, the airline system looks like. And then basically what I've done at this point is just uh, run the airlines all up the side there. Down the fuselage and the formers. And then they're just dangling towards the front where we're going to have all the air valve systems. So um, probably later on we'll add some more... Uh, more tidy strips and stuff in this area so we can have the airline remain nice and clean. But uh, right now it's just a matter of getting that airline run. So there's maybe a better look at it. And uh, nice and clean and organized. And um, I mean, it's not gonna be visible when the plane's running, but at least we can, we can problem chase anything if there's any issues, so. All right, guys, just doing some initial planning here again as well. Um, the plate and the smoke tank and everything is just temporarily put in place. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the UATs right there like that. Um, they kind of tuck in beside this former right here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a tab right here and then one on the underside. And we can use a zip tie or Velcro to hold those in place. So we have one on one side and then a matching one on the other side. And then my plan for that is I'm going to actually plumb both of those lines, the fill lines, to a, a T. And then have the single fill line back here. And that uh, should make life uh, nice and simple. When you're filling the tanks, you don't have to worry about... Uh, getting the bubbles out of both UAT. So that, that would be the reason why I would do it, right? Is if we had two fill lines, they're filling the same fuel system, but uh, then we'd have to, you know, if we do get any bubbles in one of the UATs, we'd have to fill up both of them separately. But if we have that going to a T, then it's going to push the, uh, the air out of both sides. So um, I think that should work good. All right, guys. So it has been a few days since I've uh, worked on the plane. I was away at an event. Um, but I've got all the, uh, the airlines finished. There's only a couple to finish. So here's basically all the airlines that are going to the front of the airplane. Um, the front tray is going to be all the sequence or all the air valves and the sequencer. Um, and I've kind of just been tonight just playing around and figuring out what I'm going to do with this area. So just to give you a quick rundown, um, what I'm going to do is basically build or make a plate that's going to be as wide as this area and I just glued in my two uh, fastening brackets or four fastening points there so basically we're gonna we're gonna have a tray that comes about to this point 
on the front so we'd still have access to those screws for the gear if we need them and then it's going to come all the way back to roughly that point so the the servo is uh, just clearing the, the board and it's going to be a little bit wider than what's shown here so essentially what we're going to mount on that board is we're going to have the UATs sitting right here pointing backwards they're going to be sitting like this uh, we're going to have the fuel pumps right here and what that's going to do is allow a nice bend so we can take that uh, eight millimeter line from the UAT come right over and into the fuel pump which is going to uh, going to make it a uh, nice short little run for the fuel pump intake. So we're going to have both fuel pumps mounted right here. And then we're going to have the JR uh, BPX box um, and receiver setup mounted in this kind of area right here. So, All right, so this is basically the layout that we're going with. The uh, UATs are going to be there. We're going to have both fuel pumps there. A uh, nice little tight loop to the UAT, so it's going to be a very, very short little run. Probably about a four to six inch tube. And um, so that's kind of what we're doing. We have to do a couple little cutouts here for Velcro to hold the UAT. But uh, that's the progress so far. Alright guys, so that's kind of what we're looking at as far as the board goes. Uh, this board might be in place now permanently. I don't know if we need to... Uh, to bring it back out but anyways that uh, that part's done we will need to take the UATs out to get the tank in so I've done a little bit of organizing on the wiring uh, we've got a bunch more work to do obviously with the uh, the wiring but uh, next thing I'm doing right now is I'm making the plug-in um, on the canopy section for the lock servo so just to show you exactly what I'm talking about here so there's the servo that uh, we're using for the canopy unlock and we obviously we've got the standard servo plug. So what I've done is I basically went and made this opening um, and we're going to glue the uh, female servo connector in there. I've put a yellow dot there so we know which way is the signal and um, it's gonna be fairly straightforward. We'll just use five minute high saw. Now where we've located this, uh, there's actually the former for the, the body joining together right here so we've butted this right up to the former so we'll be able to put some high saw in there easy enough and uh, this will um, work quite well I'm pretty sure and uh, it's not a super snug fit but uh, it will hold it in place while the uh, the glue is curing so um, so that's kind of the next thing I need to do uh, once that's done I should be able to install the canopy now as I've mentioned previously I do have to put the canopy in because we've got two bolts holding the uh, the canopy itself so if we put the tank in um, it, it's going to be extra hard the smoke tank to get back there to uh, to do those those bolts up which have to be done up from the inside of the aircraft so um, once the uh, the canopy's on, we'll be able to uh, to open up the canopy and, and have it open and still be able to work in this area. But uh, we do need to get that canopy installed before we can kind of go any further. So, all right, guys. So canopy is ready to go on. Uh, there's the uh, the servo plug there that I installed. Uh, when I plug the servo in, I put shoe goop on there, and uh, basically when the that's all laid in there, the uh, actual servo connection's off center, so it'll sit on the uh, Kind of the vacant side of the uh, the servo and uh, it'll be out of the way of everything so shoe goops there just to hold the plug in so it doesn't come out unless we want it to um, so basically we're going to put this canopy on and then we have to do up those two allen head bolts from the inside all right guys so i am not kidding when i say this if you are building one of these kits make sure that you put this canopy on before you join the front fuselage because this was two hours I will never get back. <laughs> and I am not kidding when I said it took me two hours. So, um, the bolts are all done up. I had to take the plate out. I had to take the, uh, the bolts holding the main tank out to give myself a little bit of extra room. Uh, you can see my hand. That's just from uh, tonight. It's all scratched to crap. Uh, anyway, so the canopy is fastened. It was... Uh, it's a lot of work. Hopefully we never have to take that off again. 
And uh, anyways, so that part's done. Um, now I just need to put everything back together the way it was. So I just need to put the uh, the tank bolts back in or the screws and, and kind of reset everything. But I just wanted to give you guys the honest down low on that. Uh, just some tools that I use, guys, to get those uh, canopy bolts done up. Um, I used my, my forceps to hold the uh, the Allen head and uh, that was able to let me basically insert it and slide it into the slot or the the hole uh, the the actual canopy part is threaded not the uh, the hole right so you're threading it into the uh, into the canopy um, I had to use my trusty mirror which has a couple of LED lights uh, I had my flashlight jammed in there and um, I was going to try and use my socket, uh, my tiny little quarter inch socket, but uh, there wasn't enough room beside the tank to actually be able to use this. So uh, what I ended up using to kind of get the, the bolts done up initially was this, and you kind of had to jam your hand in there and you could turn it about uh, a 30 second of a turn before you had to readjust. So it was quite a, quite a nightmare. And then just a standard L-Bend Allen key as well too. That's how I did up the other side. And of course it depends on on what uh, what side you're working on, right? I mean, I, I don't have fingers on my left hand, so I can't stand on this side of the airplane and use my left hand. I basically have to do it with uh, the right hand for both. So this is the last one I did up on this side and I basically would take my Allen key like this. I think I was using it like something like that. And uh, I was sticking it in the Allen key, tightening it up one, um, what's that, like a, uh, one sixth of a turn, pulling it out, resetting it in my hand, inserting it and turning it. So it was uh, a long process. Anyways, that's done. I just wanted to show you guys what tools I'm using. So, so everything's back together the way it should be. Um, if you look at the very back there, I've got just a Velcro strap around those airlines just to keep them nice and bundled. Uh, there's foam underneath the tank. I did have to pull that piece of foam out to uh, allow the tank to drop down just enough to get my hand in there. The foam's put back, tank screwed in place. So um, what I've done is I've put the uh, the feed line on the smoke tank. So I'm using a 6 mil Festo line. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually, I think, mount the smoke pump right there. I think it's going to work out good. Clears all the cockpit stuff. Uh, doesn't interfere with anything. We've got a nice former to screw into there. And um, it'll be a nice straight shot from the tank to the uh, the in outlet on the power box smoke pump. And then we've got the uh, the 4 mil Festo uh, going straight back out to the back. So uh, I think that's going to work out really well. But uh, next thing we have to do is get the smoke tank in place. And... Um, once that's in place and nice and secure, then we can start moving our way forward more. All right, guys, so smoke tank is installed. Um, if you look down at the bottom there, uh, I did put shoe goop on the tank. Now, the reason I put shoe goop down there is just so the tank doesn't move. Um, like everything I've talked about before, it's not super, well, it, it's permanent if you want it to be, but it, it's removable, right? Now, the reason I did that is because when you push the tank backwards, uh, you've got the two uh, fuel feeds coming off the main tank. Now, they're 8 millimeter Festo lines, and if you push the tank back too far, you could actually... Um, almost crushed those tubes. So what I did is I, I put the tank in the right spot, in the spot that I was happy with, and then I actually used my mirror uh, to look back there to make sure that we were uh, not um, doing any damage to the tubes. So basically if the tubes are coming off the tank like this, they're sitting at about a 30-ish degree angle uh, before they spread out around the tank. So that's going to work absolutely awesome. And uh, so we're going to have to let that shoe goop cure, but uh, the tank for the smoke system is installed. Some other good news today, my order for my, or for my buddy Joe showed up and uh, he printed me a whole bunch of different things here. So we've got some uh, airline and 3 mil Festo holders. We've got some larger ones which work on like 6 mil Festo and uh, Tigon tubing. And then we've also got these uh, phenomenal receiver holders that he did up for me for the JR units. So here's uh, one that I, I had before with uh, the antenna installed. This one I just put on today, so um, that's why the antennas aren't in place. But works really well because it spreads the antennas out and um, puts them at... Uh, 
you know, uh, was at perpendicular angles to each other. And uh, we'll probably end up using one, one for sure, but maybe two of these on this plane, um, just because it, it obviously creates really good antenna um, diversity. So happy that that stuff showed up. All right, guys, and that is the end of this episode. I think we'll cut it off there. I uh, got a lot accomplished and there's not tons left. There, there's still lots to do, but uh, nothing really huge and major. But there is. Uh, anyways, guys, so what did we do in this episode? We got uh, quite a bit accomplished as far as uh, working on the front end of this aircraft. A bunch of it is organized now. And uh, what we can do is we can start continuing to move forward. Um, I kind of envision the next episode is going to be um, kind of finishing up the cleanup and then working on the uh, the air plate and things like that and the sequencer and stuff. So if you are thinking about using one of those uh, Zukoi sequencers or have one and don't know how it works, I will be covering that in the next uh, episode. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying these build videos. We are getting close to the end and... Uh, close to this aircraft being ready to maiden. So that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. If this is your first time finding the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. When you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It supports the channel, and we will see you next time.